Hey there, my name is Muhammad Shamas. I'm an independent game developer, poet, and contemporary artist. I speak to you from the place that I live in so-called Australia, the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nations. This is currently better known as the western suburbs of so-called Melbourne. The traditional custodians of this land have never ceded their sovereignty. The land was stolen from them, and it remains, and always will remain, rightfully theirs. I stand in solidarity with them as their ongoing colonization continues, even today. I want to acknowledge this context that I'm coming to you from, and that I'm speaking from, as the game I have in this exhibition explores relationship to land, ecology, and of most interest to my creative practice, the unseen powers that encircle us. All of these relate to and have been shaped by my own displacement as a settler on this land. This acknowledgement is especially important to me as a storyteller, as the Aboriginal peoples belong to the oldest living civilization on earth where they've been telling stories and conveying their wisdom for longer than any of us can imagine. I am someone who makes things that teeter on many edges. Sometimes I'm making games, sometimes I'm writing words, and sometimes I'm mischievously weaving things together that seem like they don't quite belong. My work often takes hybrid forms across audiovisuals, interactive media, spoken and written word, and spatial or sculptural installation. These all feed and bounce off each other in a chaotic dance. One of the more interesting things I've been doing recently and for the last couple of years is virtual reality installation. I'm interested in spirituality, mysticism, and magical practices. I explore how these can create friction with emerging technologies. In my work, I bring them into dialogue with each other, so a synergy between them can also be revealed. You'll see how this appears and how it's relevant to my game pretty soon. I'm really excited and honoured to be part of Alt Shift Play's inaugural Australian Games exhibition. My game is called Albi Albkum, which is a very Lebanese way of saying the Arabic title of my game. I will refer to it as its approximate translation, My Heart is Your Heart, from here on. My Heart is Your Heart plays as a typical walking sim. It's paced very slowly. You listen to words and explore a landscape, which is known as here. There is minimal interaction with a heavy focus on concept, subtlety, and oral, visual, and written storytelling. Above all else, the primary theme of my heart is your heart is language. Language shapes the world, and in turn, the world shapes language. Language could be understood as the recording of the voice, the signified form of speaking. Speaking is a shaping of breath, and the breath is often seen as something sacred. In many languages, the word for breath and the word for spirit share the same root. Abrahamic creation stories say that God blew into clay vessels in order to create humans and their souls. We can achieve meditative or altered states through breathwork. When we experience intense emotions, the breath is present. Think of exasperation, sighs of relief or shouts of joy. The vibrations of various organs come out as signals of communication, including the heart, which circulates oxygen around the body. Language is the code with which we translate the breath. Language is also featured by my references to Ilam al-Huruf, also known as 
Hurufism or Letrism, which is the Sufi tradition of seeing the wonder of creation through the Arabic letters, including the form of Gematria, where each letter has a numerical correspondence. I crafted my heart as your heart around these explorations and thoughts on language. There are five interconnected parts that you can find and listen to in the game. These are the architect, the jeweler, the herbalist, the shepherd, and finally, an unknown voice. While it's a short experience, I've buried a lot of considered symbology and research into it. So I'm going to give you a bit of an insight into that by speaking to the five voices and to the landscape called here. The architect builds things in the open air. It's not stated how he makes his structures. They sort of seem to appear out of thin air. He is conscious of the wind and the way his structures should pay mind to it. I wanted to reframe the idea of empty space. Things like the heat of the sun or a strong breeze, things we can't really see. In that same way, the deity that he worships cannot completely be seen, but is revealed through his surroundings. He believes his provenance, the place he came from, is somehow connected to this bird deity. I was looking into psychogeography to shape this voice. The conscious and auspicious placement of buildings and visual markers at a city planning scale. Another notable influence is the Sufi epic Mantik al Tair, or The Conference of the Birds by Farid al Din Atar. The architect is voiced by my dear father, who helps me with grounding, fixing things, and revealing the inner essence of my surroundings. The jeweler has been here before. She knows the cycles that run endlessly behind the corporeal pantomime. She's perhaps the closest to understanding what's truly going on, but even if she wanted to, her will is directed entirely to getting back to herself. Eternal you. An astral twin in the sky. It's unclear what the nature of eternal you is, Though the jeweler just knows it's where she belongs. It's who she really is. The 11th century Arabic grimoire, the Ghayat al-Hakim, or the Goal of the Sage, Latinized as the Picatrix, influenced this voice the most. I was thinking about planetary energies, the stars, and talismans to draw in their rays. My personal edition of Lightning is simply because I love Lightning <laughs> a lot. <laughs> there are also Lightning-based divination practices and forms of worship that I had read around lightly. The jeweler is psychically powerful. She moves the residue metals of here and fashions them into what she needs. That being an enchanted ring that will return her hopefully for the last time, to herself. The jeweler is voiced by my dearly beloved friend who stokes my spiritual fire, helps me remember the wonder of the world, and tempers my creative practice by simply being an incredible creative herself. The herbalist is lost and alone. They notice that Earth communicates to them here, but something's wrong. They're reminiscent of the life they used to live and aren't sure how or who to be without someone to heal, as was their role in their former community. Maybe they took it for granted. Maybe it was never their true purpose anyway. This voice looks into the wisdom of plants. I was looking into flowers mentioned in the Quran as well as the stigmatized field of Ayurvedic medicine, and more specifically the Islamic equivalent of Unani. I'd also been reading a book by Dr. Gabo Mate, who speaks of neighboring body mind healing approaches. If your emotional state were a plant, what would it look like? Would it be a weed or a flower? 
What would you do with it? How would you treat it? These were the questions I was asking myself, thinking about the deeper sense of self-healing that I believe is still vital, even when collective care is possible. The herbalist is voiced by my dearly beloved friend who I explore Sufism and healing practice with. They help me feel closer to my higher purpose. The shepherd is feeling some heartache. They are separated from a loved one and aren't sure if they're grieving, if they're longing, or if they're relieved. I was thinking about love and connection and how polarizing it can be. The destruction that creation asks. The sacrifices we make to nourish those in need. I was reflecting on a memory during a visit to Lebanon of Eid al-Qurban, the Muslim celebration of sacrifice. That memory shaped this voice quite forwardly. It involved a goat, my uncle's, and a feast later that day. <laughs> While I've been a vegetarian for many years since then, I'm often thinking about the meat industry and what constitutes zabiha or halal under capitalism. When faced with the cosmic horror and their memories materializing in front of them, they make a hard decision. Instead of cattle, the shepherd gathers memories, threads that are like veins or sinews of muscle. The cosmic being that they encounter was influenced by the cosmological illustrations of Zakaria al Kazwini and the accompanying mystic hadith about the universe's orchestration. The Shepherd is voiced by my dearly beloved friend who helps me understand what healthy connection can be and how to show affection and care. If you've completed the game at the time of watching this, please continue. <laughs> If you have not, I will be treading lightly into spoiler territory, but nothing explicit. The place known as here is a sort of microcosm of my own larger world, one constructed from cultural memory, the state of things in regards to colonization, war, displacement, petrocultures, and climate crisis. For that reason, here is an enclave, an island contained within a larger piece of land. I like to think of this landscape as a type of heterotopia, a place that is both real and contrived at once. A place within places that tells of forces larger than itself. It's run down, abandoned, dry, decaying, but still these voices that colour their surroundings persist within it. In many ways, the final voice is a culmination of all the others. The people breathing life into these characters have shaped my understanding of the world. And so naturally, this final part is voiced by myself. They are in my heart. They remind me of who I'm becoming. The heart of the place known as here, even though its origins precede all the game events, is still shrouded in mystery. It's unclear and unspoken what the fate of voices are, and in that way it's a reflection of our future. Consider techno-capitalism, the ubiquity of both surveillance and crude oil, and the climate obliterating extraction and so-called defense industries. The dark heart that underpins the commercial games industry is the military entertainment complex that is conductive with weapons development and xenophobic propaganda. Wild games are, of course, not the sole issue driving these actions and industries. It's not enough for me personally to be a developer and remain quiet about these heavy tethers. The final voice somewhat indirectly expresses these sentiments the beauty we can experience in the world, and the terror that underlies it. My Heart Is Your Heart is a piece that means a lot to me. It's very much a look into some of my internal and interpersonal experiences. 
I really hope you'll enjoy it and hope that you enjoy the rest of the exhibition too. I'm so grateful to be beside some good friends and incredibly, incredibly talented peers that I admire greatly. I plan to continue polishing and adding to this game when I have time, so if you like what you've heard and you like what you see, <laughs> um, please be on the lookout. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Um, have a nice day and salam. Mm -hmm.